The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship on this, the second Sunday of Easter. It is so good to see you here at Abington Presbyterian Church. We are encouraging everyone in our community of faith to wear a name tag. So if you are in need of a new Abington name tag, I encourage you to follow the link in your bulletin to request one. Today is Older Adult Sunday. Later in our service, we will honor those who have been members of Abington Presbyterian Church for 50 years or more. Immediately following worship, we ask all of our 50-year members to come forward to the chancel steps so that we can snap a group photo of you. All others who have RSVP'd for lunch can go directly to Parish Hall. At this time, I call on Shirley Kiter to give us an announcement about music at Abington. Are you wondering what to do for excitement now that Easter Sunday is over, so early in the season? Well, next Sunday at 4 o'clock, Music at Abington presents the Arcadian Trio, a lighthearted program of dance music, ranging from classical era dance styles to ragtime and, wait for it, boogie woogie. <laughs> Come and enjoy this, the music of this trio of violin, cello, and piano. The concert will be live here in the sanctuary and will be live streamed through our website and YouTube channels. A, a reception to meet the performers and other listeners will follow the concert and child care is available. That's next Sunday, April the 14th at 4 p.m. See you then. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord of the earth. Sing and give praises to God's name. Tell the glad news of salvation from day to day. For the Lord is a gracious God whose mercy is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures for all generations.
friends, as those who have been raised with Christ, we are called to seek the things that are above. Therefore, let us cast off the sin that binds us and embrace the new life we know in Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, we confess that even as we declare your resurrection, we sometimes miss your vital force in our life. We confess that even as we live our busy life in faith, we sometimes miss your love-filled moments in our days. We confess that even as we love as you commanded, we sometimes miss seeing the stranger and the neighbor. We confess that even when we accept others as you so generously accept us, we sometimes forget that we too are worthy of your mercy and forgiveness. We cannot free ourselves from mindsets and misappropriations. We call on you to transform our thoughts, words, and deeds. By your mercy, heal us together. Remind us and redesign us. We ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Siblings in Christ, hear these words from 1 Peter. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us be at peace. Lord first appeared to his disciples, he greeted them with words of peace. Friends, let us also greet one another with words of peace. The peace of Christ be with you. And
me one of those at a game. Good morning, boys and girls. This morning I'm going to talk a little bit about nicknames. Sometimes we get good nicknames and sometimes we get nicknames that we don't really like. Our family has a whole bunch of nicknames and most of them we do like. When my little sister couldn't say my first name, Jeannie, she called me Gigi. And then my oldest grandson called me Gigi instead of grandmom, which was fine with me. And then when Cole came along, he couldn't say Gigi. So he started calling me Say J. And when Xander came along, he just copied his older brother and called me Say J. So that's a pretty funny nickname, but I love it. I'm very happy with it. And our daughter, whose name is Anne Marie, had a really good friend who started calling her Amzy. That's a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling name. I like that name too. Cole's kindergarten teacher called him CC because he's Cole Constable. And Alexander John Constable got called Xander. So we all have nicknames, and that's not something new. A long time ago, Jesus had friends, and his friends all had names, and one of them's name was Thomas. Thomas got a nickname. It was called Doubting Thomas, because after Jesus died and was buried and came back to life, some of his friends, Jesus' friends, saw him, but Thomas wasn't there, and he said, I doubt that that's true. I have to see Jesus and see the scars in the palm of his hands before I can believe that that's true. And he got the nickname Doubting Thomas. So this morning I'm here to tell you that that's not really a bad nickname, although some people say it is. I think that people that most often are looking for facts are scientists. So I'm gonna let you be a scientist this year, this week. And I'm going to give you some supplies to do an experiment. You know in school you make your hypothesis, an educated guess, you all remember that. And then you gather your materials, and then you do your experiment, you get data, and you make a conclusion based on facts. So I'm going to tell you a couple things right now, and you see if Mrs. Mueller, say Jay, is telling the truth, not, mm, I doubt that, I'm not really sure about that. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is this is a cup, and it'll hold water. Is that a this or a that? Or you know that that's true. You can prove that that's a fact. The next thing I'm going to show you is this little tiny thing, a very little tiny thing. I'm going to tell you this is a seed. Yes? No? You believe that that's a seed. Nobody doubts me. Well, that's good. I'm going to tell you this seed could grow a cucumber or a string bean. Um, I'm going to tell you it's going to grow a sunflower. Uh, you believe that? That that might be a sunflower seed? Maybe? Uh, yeah, you're questioning me. Okay, that's all right, too. The next thing I'm going to tell you is that there's two different kinds of sunflower seeds. One you eat and one that's grown to make oil. Do you believe that? You do. Okay. I'm going to tell you that Native Americans grew sunflowers for the oil, and they were able to make face paint and grease for their hair because there was no Walmarts to go buy hair products. Do you believe that? No? I'm going to tell you that there's a sunflower seed that grew to be a plant that was 25 feet tall. That's like if I, oh, you don't believe me. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. If you stood three of your dads on top of one another, that would be about 25 feet. So you're, you're not believing me. Okay. All right, I'm going to hand me one of those. I'm going to uh, tell you that this is an Oreo cookie. I'm sure you'd all like to eat this. Do you believe me? No. Oh, I've got a lot of doubters here. You, you want to try a bite? Xander, you'll try a bite. No, he doesn't even believe his own grandmother. I'm going to tell you now it's a peat pellet. And I'm going to tell you if you put it in a cup, and you put water in it and let it sit for an hour or two, it's gonna grow and get tall. Who believes me now? You believe me. You believe me. Yes, I guess. You guess. You're not sure, but you guess. You believe me. Okay. So um, this is what I want you to do. I'm gonna give you your little experiment kit. I'm gonna have a seed, some kind of seed, maybe you're growing cucumbers, I don't know, 
in the bottom so it doesn't get lost. And on top, I'm going to put this peat pellet. And you're going to take the seed out and go home and fill your cup with water. And then I need my pencil coal. If it does grow, and some of you think it is, there's a little hole in it. I want you to punch a pencil in there and then push that seed way down in your pencil hold. Put it in a warm, sunny window, keep it watered. Come back in a couple weeks and tell me what you believed and what you didn't believe. So the whole purpose of this is that you can be like a doubting Thomas and question things. That's okay. Sometimes you have to ask your parents or a teacher what the real answer is or do some research. The other thing I'm gonna tell you, sometimes people say that, come on, play with matches. Nobody's gonna get hurt. That's somebody you need to doubt. Or if the stranger says, I have the cutest little puppy in the car, but I don't know who it belongs to. Come over to my car and check out this puppy. That's something that needs to be a doubt. So this week you're gonna be scientists and you're gonna be doubters and you're gonna look for facts. So Cole, if you'll give each one of them on your way out and you're on your way to church school, I see everybody. So come on, line up here and Cole, hand them to you as you come by to go to church school. These are all done. I'll hold this. Let us pray. Gracious God, source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that as the scriptures are read, as your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from 1 John chapter 1. Let us listen for God's word to us this day. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. The word of the Lord. Our gospel lesson is from the book of John, the 20th chapter, the 19th verse word. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And then Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. And so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, 
mm, unless I see the marks of the nails on his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again at the house, and Thomas was with them. And the doors were shut, and Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it to my side. Don't doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Two days ago, our earth shook. We felt it. We called each other. We asked questions, where were you? Tomorrow, the solar eclipse will capture scientists and spirituals, spiritualists and many ordinary people in between. And we will use the tools we have to measure and mark these things like Richter scales and telescopes, we look deep within and far beyond. And whether using a microscope or binoculars or going to the eye doctor and going looking through that lens thing that keeps switching lenses, you know, our experience is modified by what we see and how we interpret our experience. We celebrate today our collective experience and the individual stories of a hundred members who are being recognized today. And truth be told, I have been wondering if we had a tool to measure all of our gifts and our own impact, how many hours of service or hymns sung or how many things could we name that we could put on the bottom of our APC website? Would we measure how many loaves of bread were broken? How many times we forgave one another? Or how many times we allowed God to forgive us? How do we measure the evidence of our collective life in Christ? In society, it's by clicks and likes and friends and followers. How do we measure and what is that lens through which we evaluate our present and modern day life? You see, we are post-resurrection people. And we are steam people, that is, good thinkers, scientists, and youth with technology skills, and educators, and artists and math experts. We humans are good thinkers and deep diggers and searching farther. Our creativity comes from God's self, Imago Dei. So that brings me right to the scripture today. I doubt, doubt is the fundamental building block of better things to come. It's part of our human experience, and I doubt. So. What's wrong with this label that we have given Thomas? I don't think that if you asked him how he self-identified, that doubt would be outcome out of his mouth. Remember, our narratives are our own. The other followers, when we meet Jesus in this place, were safe, and they were together, and they were inside, and they were away from danger. It was maybe both real or imagined. And Jesus appears to them and says, peace, and gives blessings, and gives evidence to them, showing his wounds. And all that must have been very exciting. 
So now I'm wrestling, because Ruth Sal told me I could. I'm beginning to feel a little bit annoyed. In the margins of my mind, as well as my Bible, I might be writing things like, why wasn't Thomas with the group that gathered? What was he doing out there? What was more important that caused him to miss the big reveal? That was the moment. And then when the, he finally did get word, what did he do? He questioned his trusted network. And then when he finally arrived to test and verify, which is what we all do, we kind of have to, Jesus, it seems by the tone of the scripture and passage, calls him out for needing this tangible evidence. Personally, I found that bothersome. You see, it didn't make sense to my finite mind how those questions and attitudes collide with the personal and lived experience that we have all had of Jesus and divine love. I had no placeholder or context to uh, interpret this shaky place. And just in the same way as I find it with texts and posts, the tone of voice in the room is not clear to me. I don't see the body language. And something in me is amiss, but what could it be? Again, we look through another lens. This gospel author already knows about the victory over sin and death. And you and I are also looking. We know that Jesus forgives, not condemns, and frees us, and that grace abounds. We know this to be true. So this Jesus, from my lived experience and yours, seems to be would not appear to the followers then or now to impose labels that would divide or impose judgments that would shame. Instead, this Jesus would care. And how does he do that? The author of the Gospel of John also reports a series of events that give us some clues. A timeline. In the beginning was the word, the idea uttered, great life, the, sac the source of life and the promise. And then, look, did you see those miracles and the healings and the crowds that gathered? There's your proof. And then, oh yes, remember also the ups and the downs of the Holy Week the anointing and the betrayals and the losses and the confusion and the kindness and the empty tomb. Folks, that's what the whole week was about. And all that confusion and all that drama, today we would call trauma. Here we are, post-resurrection people, looking back on a group of people who are still suffering. You see, just because Jesus appears, all that crazy doesn't magically go away. Folks, here we are, post-resurrection people, with a viewpoint that says, as we look back through time on that narrative, we also look through our lens, whether it's the pandemic, our own traumas, our personal stories, our timelines of promise revealed, proof of God's walk with us, through our pain to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord, the living one. Aha, so now you see I can sit as you can too, authentically and safe in the room when Jesus appears. No longer do I hear Look at that proof. Instead, now I hear, brother and sister, go ahead and touch these places on me that have been wounded. It doesn't seem to matter, does it now, that Thomas came late at a different time? He received the same invitation as the others, to be vulnerable, to sit together, to process, and to begin to piece it all together, to inquire. 
It was shared time. And once all the disciples gave it a try, then Jesus showed them even more signs and miracles. Now, we don't get the details about that, but when we look forward to early Christian church, the followers are fully equipped and are performing signs and miracles. How did that happen? Something sacred happened in that downtime when they were together learning signs and miracles from Jesus. You see, what happened, I think, is the trauma did not define nor interfere with the followers going forward. We are post-resurrection, joyful, holding new life. We are post-pandemic people. And even though the world does feel a little shaky and unpredictable and somehow terrifying, we are okay. Jesus didn't appear in that room to pit Thomas against his peers or pit the faithful against the logical, but rather to infuse hope. It's that sigh that we feel when we say, thank God that is behind me. Thank goodness that chapter is closed. I can breathe and move forward. You see, compassion entered the room to reassure and reaffirm and reinvigorate and to mentor and to equip us. And one final thought, Jesus blessed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. The followers have no idea as they begin to embody the signs and miracles and welcome and forgiveness in their own lives, that over centuries, Christianity will explode around the globe. You see, those are these. These in these pews, you and me. Those who embody the signs and miracles and welcome and forgiveness, the proof that just by living life, no matter what twists and turns, together we survive and thrive, thanks be to God. Looking back with gratitude and sigh of relief, continuing to learn and to grow and wrestle for this day, and confident that we know just as the earlier fathers did not know us, that we still do not know the followers who are yet to become a part of the global church family. The words of Jesus and the actions of Jesus still speak today. But these were the words that maybe touch us most. And I hear them this way. Peace be with you. I am here with you. Peace be with you. Reach out and touch one another in pain and in joy. Peace be with you. You are safe together. And so, says Jesus, and so I send you equipped. And so I send you with a spirit, with a spirit of holiness, with the Holy Spirit. And that, and will not be, and cannot be ever contained. Amen.
Good morning. I have the privilege today of reading all the names of our 50 year and over members. First of all, I would like to, die, to uh, recognize Diane Reed, who has been a member for 80 years. She is at the top of our list and she is here this morning. Diane? Okay, I will read the rest in order of the number of years that they have been members. Wayne A. Cunningham, Lois V. Hill, Carol Risco, Amy E. Gold, Eleanor K. Given, Diane Castor, William Dutcher III, Jane Gilliam, Gilbert P. High, Jr., Dwayne G. Sonnenborg, Jr., Joan R. Fonts, Mary Finley, M. M. Harris, Doris Berner, Barbara Jacobs, Thomas Bunting III, Ernest Patton, Jr., James M. Wynn II, Caroline Bunting, Joan Myers, Judy Sandstrom, Judy Shepherd, Barbara M. Stoll, Marilyn Wank, Virginia R. Cunningham, George Bin, Renee Wynn, Walter Zarnecki III, Laura Lafferty, Douglas R. Lynch Sr., Peter H. Morris, Merle Rose, Denise E. White, Edward Williams Jr., Eleanor K. Barwis, Carol Watt, Gail McNugna, Patricia Lentard, Edith Williams, Edith Miller, David Webb, Walter Butcher Jr., Robert C. Adams, Bernice Keebler, Betty Grath, James Grath, Carol Butcher, Sue Amasager, Paula Long Arnold, Susan J. High, Catherine Seibel, Charlotte A. Hollish, Nicholas Wonk, Bruce L. Castor Sr., John B. Neff, Shirley Neff, Frank T. Sandstrom, Jr., Marlon White, Richard Mabry, Randa Such, William R. Such, Daniel Snayberger, Jr., Ann N. McNamee, Francis X. Cunicelli, Sally Adams, Stephen Benson, Doris Brocious, J. Howard Brocious, Sandra Durr, Richard T. Lapham, Gertrude Mann, Robert J. Mann, Mary E. Tyrell, Ruth Young, William J. Young, William, yeah, William J. Rung, so, sorry, Young Jr., Betty Lou Scholler, Candace Snayberger, Lilius Lewis, Bernice Wysocki, Paul R. Forrest, Joan A. Lane, Charles Lane III, Baron Rowland, Carolyn Koch, 
Gary Koch, Howard Mason Helder III, Suzanne C. DeMarco, Albert L. Foster Jr., Jeffrey T. Harbison, Sandra Hostetter, David E. Faust, Diane Faust, Bonnie Lloyd, James G. Marshall, and Beverly Moore. Let's give them all a hand, please. Now join me in prayer. We give thanks that you have brought all these faithful followers to touch our lives, lead us in love, impart insight, and guard our path with the help of the Holy Spirit. We cherish them and embrace them, never forgetting we are better because you first loved us. Amen. All that we have is a gift from God. So with gratitude, let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth.
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, from north and south, to sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share the feast which he has prepared. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to you, O God, for all your works. You created the world and called it good and made us in your image to live together in love. You made a covenant with us, and even when we turned from you, you remained ever faithful. Therefore, with all creation, we sing your praise. God for sending us your son. He lived among us and told your story. He healed the sick and welcomed sinners. He shared our pain and died our death, then rose to new life that we might live and all creation be restored. Remembering your boundless love revealed to us in Jesus Christ, we break bread and share the cup giving ourselves to you to live for him in joy and praise. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for the world. By your spirit, unite us with Christ and one another until we feast with him and with all your saints in your eternal realm of justice and peace. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we gather at this table, we remember another gathering, another table. We remember that on the night of his betrayal and arrest, our Lord gathered with his closest friends and followers. And during the meal, he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Let us keep the feast.
people of God, let us join together in the prayer following communion. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the world. The Lord has risen indeed. Amen.